I'm really glad you're here. This is kind of an adventure. It's like going back to the old COVID days when, you know, everything was online. OK, so I'm going to start at the very beginning. And you've been through this before. Maybe it's been a while, though. This is let me let me go here and let me make the picture bigger. Right there. Here we have a function. That was supposed to be a comma. Here we have a function. Wait a minute. See what color I'm in. I seem to be in blue. I want to be in black there. OK. And this function consists of three points. OK, notice I was very creative. I said one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a function. How do I know? Well. There. One, two would be about here. Three, four. See, one, two, three, and up four. And five, six, one, two, three, four, five. That's five, so a little higher would be six. And there I have some points. I could have made any points. Some could be negative, some could be positive. Um, uh, some of the coordinates might be fractions or decimals. I could have made it as complicated as I wanted to, but I just didn't want to. The point I wanted to make was that this is a function, even though it's three disconnected points, just the points, not the line. Because if you draw, if you draw, a vertical line up and down through these points as well as you can. Notice that the line intersects each of these points at only one point, which means that even though it looks weird, even though it's three disconnected points, um, this is a function. OK, well. All right, so let's talk about domain and range. Just real quick and basic definition. Okay. The domain is the set of all the X coordinates. And you're gonna see that I make a set and you use squiggles or braces is their official name. You use braces when you make a set. And the reason I'm using braces is that I'm just going to list the X coordinates. That was a really ugly X. One, three, and five. That is the domain of our little function right here. And the range is the set of all the Y coordinates. So the second coordinate is a Y coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Y coordinate. So I'll list them as two, four, and six. That's a very, very basic definition of what a function, well, of what domain and range are. OK, any questions about that? Obviously, it gets more complicated, but that's the basic definition right there. The domain is all the X coordinates that make up the points.
The range is all the y coordinates that make up the points. So it makes sense that since this is the point one, two, for instance, and this is three, four, and that one's five, six, Thank you. Hello. The X coordinate of one, two, the X, one, is located here, right here. And the Y coordinate is located here. For three, four, the X coordinate is located here, and the Y coordinate is located here. And for 5, 6, the X coordinate is located here, and the Y coordinate is located here. So you can also think of this as the domain being on the X axis and the range being on the Y axis. So I'm going to write that X axis, Y axis. OK, just some real basic stuff about domain and range when you're dealing with functions. We're going to use just briefly on these are two of your homework problems. We're going to use the vertical line test. If you only have a graph, and you can't see the individual points. Well, you know, we could make individual points, but let's make it easy here. Uh, what all we need to do is imagine drawing a graph. Or if it's on paper, actually draw the graph. Draw a vertical line through any number of points in the graph, and you can see that each of these vertical points touches the graph at only one point. One point. Whereas if I draw a line through this oval, we call it an ellipse. Whoops. Well, it's really hard for me to draw straight lines. I just do not do it well. Um, but anyway, this vertical line touches the graph at two points. If the vertical line touches every point on the graph at only one point, it's a function. So yes, this is a function. However, if a vertical line touches a graph at more than one point, it's not a function. There are, generally speaking, names for anything you can graph. Like, suppose I draw this swirly thing. I can think of this as having points, X, Y points. And I can use the vertical line test to tell me if it's a function. The shape itself is a correspondence. Another name for it that you may have heard is relation. Okay, anything you can draw. 
anything is a correspondence or a relation because you can think of every little point on the graph as having an X and a Y coordinate. <clears throat> well, what's being related and what has a correspondence um, is the X and the Y. This is a relation, this is a relation, this is a relation, and this is a relation. Because X and Y are being related by the graph. But special relations, special correspondences like this are functions. So functions are also relations. They're also correspondences, but they're just special. Each X goes to only one Y. Whereas here, for instance, this X, negative one, goes to this Y value and to this Y value, whatever they are. So as long as an X on the X axis goes to only one Y on the Y axis, we have a function and it makes everything easier. And you can unmute yourself and speak up if you have any questions. If not, I'll go on. OK, now here. This is where it starts to get difficult because we have more than one point involved. In fact, we have an infinite number of points on this line. This line goes forever and forever and forever. I'll kind of try to continue it with my lack of drawing talent. Keeps going forever to the left and forever down. So let's talk about the X and the Y axis for a minute and just remember that these go forever down and forever up, okay? The, the y-axis goes forever down to negative infinity and forever up to positive infinity. And the x-axis goes forever to the left to negative infinity and forever to the right to positive infinity. So this arrow means that this part of the graph is going down and to the left, both. And this part right here with the arrow pointing to the right means that this graph will continue forever in a straight line to the right. Now there are so many points on this line the lines go forever in both directions. The line, the, the graph, goes forever to the left and the right in both directions and forever up and down. That's a lot of points. There are an infinite number of points here. You wouldn't live long enough to list them all. So we have another way of describing the domain and range. We have interval notation, which is more common, honestly. Notation just means a way of writing. and a set builder, well, set builder.
notation. Okay, as we're getting more and more people, I'm going to take a, a quick break, commercial break, and say that I've had trouble through the night of my power going off and then coming back on. So if I suddenly disappear, it means my power went off again, but don't worry, I'll make a video of everything I was going to say um, in this uh, presentation. So don't worry, you'll have the information. Okay, but back to interval notation. For domain, Since the graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right, and infinity and negative infinity are not really numbers, I'm going to write the domain this way. Negative infinity to infinity. I have to use parentheses, and in a minute I'll explain why if you're not familiar with this. The range is a little more complicated here. All right, these are the X coordinates which are on the X axis. So you can think of domain as being the part of the X axis that matches the graph. Yeah, that matches the graph. The part of the X axis that matches the graph. So the part of the X axis, if you use your imagination a little bit, that matches the graph is since this is going to the left forever, this is going to go all the way out to negative infinity. And since this is going to the right forever, it goes all the way to positive infinity. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, on the other hand, is the y-axis, the part of the y-axis that matches the graph. So here's the y-axis, the vertical axis. And as the graph goes down forever, that means that the graph starts at or goes to negative infinity. So I never put a bracket around negative infinity, but you are about to see, oh, that's right. Yes, you are. Okay. Negative infinity here means all the way down. Negative infinity for domain means all the way to the left. For my domain, I go all the way to the right. But I don't go all the way up with the range. I don't go up to positive infinity. Look at this. This is five, so this is four. Right there. Four on the y-axis. And every point on this line is going to have a different x-coordinate, but all the y-coordinates are going to be Four. So the highest that this graph goes is four. And y actually equals four here. So I'm going to write a four because that's the farthest up that the graph goes. And then because y actually equals four, I'm going to put a bracket and I'm gonna erase that little mark so you don't think it's a decimal point. So let me get the eraser 
there. And then there. So a bracket means that y actually equals 4. But y can't actually equal negative, negative infinity because negative infinity is just a symbol. That means, well, in the, in the context of, of the y-axis, goes down forever. That's why we only use parentheses around infinities and negative infinities. OK, this will be more familiar to you, I think, because it's used a lot. I like it better. Most teachers like it better. But there is set builder notation and you will encounter this. Well, like I said before, when you're writing a set, you use braces. So I'm going to do this. And for range, same thing. I'm going to write the equivalent of goes forever to the left and right, goes forever down, but only up to four, okay? I'm going to write the equivalent statements here. Well, domain is all the X coordinates, the X axis really. That's how I show whether I'm dealing with domain or range, so I don't really have to use any words. That's what you'll encounter first. For domain, you'll encounter X bar, and for range, you'll encounter Y bar. And then, here, and you'll see this um, in your book, the way they write it in the book is, X is all real numbers. Well, okay. I mean, let's try to be perfect here. Useless with me. Here we go, all real numbers. Now I'll put my brace out here. What are real numbers? They're the numbers on the x-axis and the y-axis. They're the numbers in what we call our, our real number system. That's the name of our number system. The symbol for all real numbers is R with two bars. real number system. Okay, okay. Another way to write this, the way mathematicians really write it, because we hate words, is X is an element of the real number system. And if you were in a higher, higher level math group, uh, math class, you would see this. But you don't have to know it now. I'm just telling you. Because negative infinity to positive infinity is every single number on the X axis. Well, it's all real numbers. Every number we can think of, but not the I numbers, not the complex numbers. We studied those before and we're going to study them again a little later. However, the real number system, uh, the real numbers are the numbers we're used to. Now, the range does go all the way down. But it ends right, <clears throat> right here at y equal 4. It's like it hits a brick wall. So another way to think of this 
is that the y coordinates are every number less than or equal to four, meaning four and all the way down. So that's what I'm going to write here. And what you'll see in your book is written out, x is all real, num oh, x is a real number and. So I'm gonna write x, just because I don't have room, I'm gonna write it this way, and, x is less than or equal to 4. That's very alien to most of us. But it's something you need to get used to because publishers love it. I don't know why. Um, I've heard people say, well, it, it costs them less money than having to set up interval notation. I don't know. That's the real truth. But anyway, this is set builder notation, and this is interval notation. This means, this means exactly this, and this means exactly this. Okay, we're going to play with this some more. This graph will give you um, an even better idea of what brackets are used for. Okay, I'm going to use two different colors here. Um, I'm going to let the x-axis be green and the y-axis be blue, since the graph is red. So green, do I have green? Yes. Let's make it dark green. Maybe that's too dark. No, it's fine. Okay. Now, this point right here has an X coordinate. Let's see, neg negative 10, negative 9, negative 8. Looks like negative 7 to me. So negative 7 is the X coordinate right here. And over here, the X coordinate is, appears to me to be positive seven. So the graph from left to right covers this part of the X axis between negative seven and positive seven. Also, these points are all filled in. They're solidly black. There are other kinds of points. What that means is that X actually equals negative seven. In our next graph, you have holes at the end point. And that means something different. So this means that X actually equals negative seven. X equals all these little X numbers. And then ends at positive seven. And a solid hole here means that X actually equals positive seven. X equals seven. Trying to thicken up the seven there so it's more visible. Okay, now the domain, which is in green, And in interval notation, 
because x actually equals negative 7, I'm going to write a bracket and negative 7. Because negative 7 is on the left, it will be on the left here. So I'll write left. That's not part of it, but I want you to know that that means left. Then I write a comma to separate the numbers. And then I go all the way to the right to positive 7. And x actually equals 7 here. And this is the right end point. These points, negative 7 and positive 7, are called end points of the domain. And this comma means that x equals everything between negative 7 and positive 7. OK. Now the range, I'm going to make that in blue, and I think I'll try to make it thicker. OK, here's blue. And yeah, let's make it thicker. OK. Down here, a solid black line means that Y actually equals negative four. And the, you go to the highest point, not necessarily the end point, the highest Y number is positive four. And these solid points, or even just the red graph, as long as there aren't holes in it, that means that Y actually equals four. So y equals negative 4 and y equals positive 4. So the range graph is from, yeah, this is much more visible, negative 4 on the bottom to positive 4 on the top. And again, because y actually equals the endpoint 4, the endpoint 4 would be right here. The endpoint negative 4 is here. And the part of the y axis that goes with the graph is colored in blue. And I describe it here for interval notation. Now, this is the range, so let me say this is the range. And now that it's a little darker, uh, heavier, there. Negative seven, seven. And we'll make that thicker too. So here's a picture, if you will, of your range and your domain. The part of the domain being the part of the x-axis that accompanies, matches up with the graph. And the range is the part of the y-axis that matches up with the graph. Range is a little trickier because you don't just depend on the left and right endpoints. Instead, you're looking for the lowest point and the highest point. Now let's write these in set builder notation. Need to make this a little smaller. Okay. Now domain in set builder notation. It always, almost always, takes more room than interval notation. So this is, this is interval. And this is set 
builder. Okay, the domain. Well, it's the X coordinates on the X axis. So I make an X bar. And then I have to describe this situation right here. I have to describe the green situation. X is going to equal negative seven. X is going to equal positive seven and every number in between little decimals, little square roots and bigger numbers like six, five, four, three, two, one, negative zero, negative one, negative two, neg blah, blah, blah. Oh, OK, well, OK, X then I'll put my X here. X is going to be between negative seven and positive seven. This is on the left, this is on the right. And X is between negative seven and positive seven, and X equals negative seven, and x equals positive seven. So this says exactly what this says, just in a different method. For the range, now we're gonna to go to blue. We always start and end with squiggles when we're talking about sets of numbers. We are talking about the Y's now if we're talking about range. Now, let me check this out. Well, the Y's have a definite starting place. We always start on the bottom and go to the top and a definite ending place. And I forgot to say that they're all real numbers. Actually, you won't be saying that in a while. Um, look at your homework and see. I think it already writes it for you that X is a real number and Y is a real number. So all you have to do is put in the answer. What we're gonna say is what this says. And that is that negative four is on the bottom. Positive four is on the top. Y is in the middle. That's how I say Y is in the middle. And if y actually equals negative four, which it does, I write a line underneath like that, just like I did up there. And if y actually equals positive four, I write a line underneath like that. So that this says exactly this. And I know that takes some getting used to. So I'm going to pull out a little bit so you can see the whole page. Maybe the whole page. Well, all right, the whole page. Together. You're learning to speak the math language and it's never easy to learn another language. So you have to be flexible. I have a question. Sure. 
So, um, like on the second graph that you're working out, um, with the range, like Uh what if the highest, like the highest point was like, um, positive two or like just a completely different number? Would it still work the same or do they have the same number? No, they don't. They, they can be entirely different numbers. Okay. That's a good question. Good, more questions. Okay. How would it, how would oh. it work if um, they weren't a part of the graph? It would be more complicated. I didn't give you anything like that, did I? No, I was just curious. Yeah, I, it would be more complicated. And I'd be glad to uh, show you some problems that have something like that. Okay. More questions. Okay, but. You can write it down too. If you think of it later, email me. I'm going to be cleaning house. Whoa, is that fun? (laughs) So I would much rather help you. Here we have open numbers. Open endpoints, I should say. I'm sorry. Open endpoints. Let's talk about what that means. That means, I think I'll just go back to black for a while. Okay. What this means is that these points get infinitely close to that end point, and these points get infinitely close to this endpoint, but they don't exactly equal the endpoints. Think of it as a ghost. Suppose you're standing in a haunted house and you suddenly discover that you're right up against a ghost. Really close. But it's not like you're inside it. Same idea. Okay, so let's determine what these are. The the X coordinate is negative one. The Y coordinate is seven. I mean, the X other X coordinate is seven. So this is negative one and this is I'm going to outline it. This is seven. So if we're writing an interval notation, let's write the domain first. I notice that the part of the Y axis that goes with the graph, goes from negative one to positive seven. But X doesn't actually equal negative one. So I realize now that this was kind of a logistical mistake. I'm going to erase the the whole thing, and make an open circle here at negative one, and then go back to being green, and draw my domain. Okay, and so uh, it's the same thing for interval notation. The left end point is negative one. 
the right end point is seven, but here X does not actually equal, doesn't equal negative one, and X doesn't equal seven, but X does equal all the little X coordinates between negative one and seven. So for that reason, I use parentheses. That's when I use parentheses. When X, or if it's range Y, doesn't actually equal the end point. Okay, now if we go to blue, Now we're dealing with bottom to top. It's important to say that here on the X axis, Y equals zero. OK, that's really something you should remember. So if I'm looking at the Y's, I notice that Y starts at negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. But there's going to be an open circle there because Y doesn't actually equal negative four. And it goes up to where Y equals zero, which is the X axis. So I'm going to put a blue circle there, but it's not green. It's just for the blue. So I'm going to go down here. Range. The bottom number is negative four. The top number is Y equals zero, so zero. But Y doesn't actually equal negative four and Y doesn't actually equal zero. And the fact that the endpoints are open, tell me that. So this is interval notation. Interval. <clears throat> okay, now you can see right. I I included the correct answers. You can see right here for choose the correct domain. I need to use a different color for domain. Kind of silly, I know. Domain in interval notation. So let me uh, uh, set builder. Water. Draw. Set builder. <laughs> I'm going to have to blow my nose, so I'm going to turn off my mic for a minute. There, I think I'm going to survive. Okay, 
Now, where was I? Set builder. There you have X is a real number, and really that's what it means here. Such that X is between negative one and seven, but it doesn't actually equal negative one or seven. If it did, it would have bars underneath like this, but they're not there. Now, range. Interval notation. Y is between negative four and zero. And notice that the letter now is Y because range refers to the Y axis and the Y coordinates. So I'll make that a, a blue star or something. And this is set builder. OK, now we're going to change to some interesting stuff. So let's go over questions for domain and range. Now, we're going to do something that's truly college algebra. Um, OK, I'm going to make this bigger because I need the picture. What we're being asked is you can't see the negative three. You think you can see the negative three, but you can't. That's because I, uh, I included all the answers. So this would actually be blank. And you're being asked to find F of one. <clears throat> Let's talk about what that means. I'm going to make this bigger, bigger, bigger. So that it's easier to see. Because now it's the graph that's important. You don't have an equation for this graph. So you can't just plug in negative one for the X and find out what the Y is. Instead, we're going to have to use the graph. And here's what this means. This is always the X number in parentheses there. And the answer you get is always the Y number. But of course you can't see that yet. All right, if they want F of one, that means we go to X equals one right there. I go down to the graph. And then over to the Y axis. And I see that if X equals one, let's even do this, then the graph takes me to Y equals negative three. And that's why the answer is negative three. F of one is negative three. We're going to do more of those two. But, ah, here we go. Now we're being asked something different, so you have to look really closely at these. So I'm going to make it even bigger, 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 bigger. We're looking at this now. What are the X values such that 
f of x equals negative 1. This time we're given the y, and we have to find the x. So we start out at y equals negative 1. We <clears throat> X, okay. Okay, all right, there we go. I had a, a an elderly moment. We go to Y equals negative one right here. Now we're gonna have to go sideways to get over to the graph. When we get there, we go to the x-axis because that's where we're looking, that's what we're looking for. This x number, which is five. So we start at y equals negative one, go to the graph, and then to the x-axis. And we land on x equals five. So that means if we had looked for f of five, we would have started at five, gone to the graph, and ended up at negative one. which of course means that this point right here is the point five, negative one. So you see how the graph, the graph of the function is relating the X and the Y. We could have here where we found f of one before. F of one, we went to one, went down to the graph and went over to negative three. This could easily have been f of x equals negative three. So instead you would have gone to y equals negative three over to the graph and then up to the x axis and that would have put you at one. So there's a graphical meaning and there's a numerical meaning. Let us move on. We're gonna do this again with this graph, only it's a little more complicated. This is a graph of the absolute value function. We're going to be dealing with this a little bit during the class. It's a V. It comes to a sharp point. OK, that's that's very different from a lot of the graphs we're going to deal with. All right, and we're going to answer these questions. First, we're going to find F of three. Now, remembering that this is the X. So we need to find why. Well, let's go to x equals three. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have it here. So here's one, here's two, here's three. I'm going to go up to the graph and over to the y-axis. And it takes me to y equals three. So here, this is three. I go up to x equals three. I go up to the graph. 
and it takes me over to y equals 3. So we have just calculated that f of 3 is 3, but this is y equals 3. Let me write y under there. And that, of course, is x, and it's better for me to write it like that, I think, so, because it's not a power or anything like that. Okay. Now it wants the domain. Well, check out these arrows. Now remember that if we're dealing with domain, we're dealing with the X axis. So we only care about left and right when we're talking about domain. So I'm going to make a note to that effect. Left. I am. Oh, OK. Left. To. Right. These arrows mean that this is going to go forever to the left as it's going up. So we're going to have negative infinity out here, positive infinity out here, So the domain, if it were interval notation, would be negative infinity to positive infinity. But when you're dealing with set builder notation, you would have X bar. X is all real numbers or a real number, something like that. And of course, since all of you are planning to be math majors, you could get used to writing it like that. That means the entire x-axis, the whole x-axis. Okay, now they want us to find all the x values for which f of x equals one. Now remember, the, that's the x, we don't know it. Here's the y. We do know it. We're going to go to y equals 1. So here's y equals 1. And I'm going to go over to the graph. But look at this. There are two points where y equals 1 y equals 1 here, and y equals 1 here. So there are two points, I mean two x-coordinates, where y equals 1. Down here at 5, and down here at 7. So the x-coordinates where y is 1, are x equals 5 comma 7. No parentheses, you're just listing the two numbers. And there will be an answer box, and you'll type 5 comma 7, or whatever the numbers are for your graph. Now the range. This definitely goes up forever to positive infinity on the y-axis, but it doesn't go down forever. It only goes here to y equals zero, which is the x-axis. So this is as far down 
as the graph goes. Well, if we were writing this in interval notation, we would write the, this as y equals zero all the way up to infinity on the y-axis. And that says the graph goes from y equals zero all the way up to y equals infinity. But we're dealing with you know what. We're dealing with set builder notation. So the range, I'm going to write it over here. Squiggle, squiggle. Y bar. Now, if that went down to negative infinity, I could just say all real numbers, but <clears throat> it doesn't. It starts at zero and goes up forever. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that Y is greater than or equal to zero. That means it starts at zero and then goes forever. So let me get rid of, yeah, I put it too far over. That doesn't matter though. That's your range right here. Now this one is a little more difficult. What have you learned? You learned that more than one X coordinate can have the same Y coordinate. And that's okay. It's still a function. But one X coordinate cannot have two Y coordinates. That's the difference. So this is the point 5, 1, right there. And that's the point 7, 1. Discussion about this. I think it's time for class to be over. And that was the end. So class is dismissed, but I'm glad to take any questions. If there aren't any questions, I'm going to turn off the recording. Right, all right, all right. Uh, stop recording. Stop.